Now let's look what this capacity modeling is as a process. Now let's define a capacity modeling. A successful capacity planning is all about knowing how to reduce or how to reduce risk without disturbing the production environment. Now if you look at the infrastructure, you're going to plan your infrastructure based on user volume, based on the growth that you would be seeing in another two, three years or five years or ten years because after two years if you think that the servers are useless, then I cannot actually sell the service for actually a, a resale value is gone completely down. After three to five years, I think the missions are nowadays not in which is the end of life. So when you're planning and buying a server, you're going to actually use your complete, uh, you know, signs and a complete strategy and complete uh, analysis before you buy one. So you're going to plan your infrastructure based on the server configuration, based on the performance of enterprise applications as well like looking at number of years, uh, number of, uh, you know, uh, distributed network uh, nodes. So these are the important things that you have seen. So I, I repeat my definition of capacity modeling and planning, which is knowing how to reduce risk without disturbing the production environment. Now, this would be, whose work would this be? This would eventually be a joint collaboration work between performance testing engineers and the capacity planners, which is infrastructure engineers as well. Now, let's look at the approach into a four box diagram. As you see, there could be a data coming from either the, either the performance testing tool, for example, in this case I used load runner, or it could even come from any other tool. For example, other performance testing, like you can do a JMeter open source tool, that even that also provides some kind of results. Then there are performance monitoring tools like Perfmon, SiteScope, OpenView Performance Manager, as you keep doing testing, you are anyway monitoring and measuring the data. And those data, you put it in the dump in an Excel sheet and now give it to a special tool and solution called Capacity Manager. This was erstwhile high performance and uh, Capacity CA, Capacity Manager is a new version or a new uh, evolution from high performance. Now what does this particular Capacity Manager do? The first thing, it will just get on to all the entire huge lump of data that you had been monitoring in terms of CPU, memory, and each and every core of a CPU, and the disk, network, private bytes, thread, contention, contact switching, everything, it just takes and analyzes it and keeps it ready. Then it creates a kind of a model. What does a model mean? A model is something like deriving a formula. For example, let us say if I tell, Two computers cost 20,000. Three computers cost 60,000. Sorry, uh, 30,000. Then you, are, you can definitely tell how much is a four computers cost, which is 40,000. So if you know two data points, you are ready with one kind of a small formula. And that formula, I can actually extrapolate for a higher values. Now, when you tell formula, that is what is model. So looking at the data points, and the way the data points had been incrementing, the manager, capacity manager creates automatically an analytical model using that data. Now, why do I need to create a model or formula? This formula, now I can use it for a higher loads, which I was not able to do test in the local, small, or the downsized environment. So, and those kind of extrapolation is called what-if experiment, the third blue box. And finally, once you have done the what-if experiment, you can start doing the analysis of results. So this is how a typically a capacity modeling approach should be and would be. Now, once, now you can ask me, now load runner test results actually provides response time through for six per second, is it any, uh, are we going to use it here? The point here is the load runner or any performance testing tools provides the information on application end to end. But capacity manager would need the hardware data from the monitoring tools. So I'm going to quickly get on to the questions from data analysis. It's preparing a single business function phrase and generating a network performance profile, process a single business load test, generate the resource usage summary, create application profile, which I told you. The second is the model construction, which means deriving a formula. It is just for which you need to provide some kind of input data like hardware topology, the way the measurements are going up and to build an application profile. Then the third is what if, it's as simple as prediction. What if the CPU is double the size? 
what if the RAM is uh, four times what it is now? Then finally, it's the analysis of results. So something that I've already told is what is mentioned in this, this slide. So let me go further. Now look at this. Which are the various places I can get the data from? I'm sure on your top left you can see PerfMon, L12 performance monitor. And you can see on your right hand side the V center which is actually used to see the CPU uh, of the hypervisors. Then on your left you can see the CA Wiley which is one of the commercial tools to monitor the enterprise applications. Then the black color window which is the NMON utility which is AX, IBM's AX as NMON as the monitoring utility. On your right hand side again you can see Hyper-V which is the hypervisor monitoring. So these kind of data you will know how you should know how to capture it and then feed it to capacity manager. Now now is what I'm going to tell this tell the stuff that I told you even before. So thousand users, I'm going to run a dual hours test. And please understand that one of the best practices is when you want to do any kind of extrapolation you have to run the test for continuously for quite some time. So in this case, it's a 12 hours. It might sound like an endurance testing or a soap testing, but that is how you will have to do. If we wanted the capacity manager to come up with a good looking analytical formula or a model, then you will have to do a longer run or a longer duration of test. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I have been gathering all the important counters like CPU memory disk network and CPU memory disk and network. So now everything I'm going to put it in one database and then I'm going to use capacity manager to talk to that database and create a model or formula out of it. Now this is how it is something that we already have covered the process. So if you look at this modeling process, it is characterizing the characterizing the infrastructure. What is characterizing? Like you're gonna give configuration and then you know kind of uh, configure the actual the size of those uh, servers and network or what whatever network components are present. Then these uh, measurements that we got is because of this particular workload. For example, 100 users or 1000 users, something like that. Now once you create, well, then you drive a model and you run the model for various scenarios. Then you run some scenarios and then finally validate the model. So this is our typical process of modeling is, this is an another perspective. Now look at this, there are a few examples that I wanted to show. This is an example where I'm telling that month on month I wanted to see the CPU utilization. Now I, in this case I did a horizontal scaling which means I replaced the existing server with a high TPP. A TPP means total processing power. It's a combination of your CPU size, uh, networks, uh, uh, the disk controller speed and uh, memory, the speed in which the uh, paging happens, etc., and then they come up with one number. So TPP is a function of CPU speed, disk speed, and the memory prominently. So so that I can tell that you know if this is a server, the server has the 355 TPP, which means it means this is the combination CPU. So I am completely removing the server, and I am actually putting another server. Okay, and uh, I'm going to check how is the extrapolation. So as you look into the graph, a month on month, this is how it is going to go. You are also noting another uh, uh, alert point, which is at 90%, I kept a red, red color line. So I'm saying that 90% is my threshold, and I don't want that to be crossed. So if you keenly look at your uh, right extreme, 25, 11, and 2011 here, by that time, it has almost reached 60%. Now you can look at this, the graph is actually not looking linear and there is some kind of hyperbolic nature. So now if you are starting from 24th 12, 2010 to 25, 11, 2011, which means that 12 months. So from 12 months it has gone to 10 to 60, 60, 50 to 60. So what if it's going to be another one year? Will it easily touch 90%? By looking at a smooth hyperbolic curve, it would be. However, you might have to extrapolate it analytically by using the model. So this is one such derivation. This is how we try to interpret the graph and try to interpret this kind of uh, modeling for horizontal scaling. Now let's look at vertical scaling. Now what happens is I had I have actually loaded all the results into the capacity manager. 
Now what I do is I actually try to increase the RAM size and increase the CPU speed. Okay, because my uh, my, uh, the my infrastructure team or my stakeholder has told that we will not be able to procure a server. If you want, you can actually improve the uh, improve the components or the speed of the components inside the server, which means increase the RAM size or the CPU speed. So I increase the RAM from two to four GB, CPU from single or single to dual core. Now look at the results. Uh, the same kind of server, how does he produce? So still you can see there is some kind of a straightness here, and if you look at this area. The last four five months, uh, there is an actually exponential, which you might not notice in the naked eye. However, that is the actual uh, phenomena. So this is how you see for vertical scaling. Now let's go. Let's go ahead. Now look at the forecasting the underutilized the server. Now you can also say that you know when you are in this 24, 12, 2010, it's been used around the 7 to 8 percentage. As you keep proceeding, maybe another one year, it's probably use a 20, 25 percentage CPU. So which means even if it just goes another one year, it will go to 40, 45, then 60, 65. So another three years, I think the server the server is not going to be used so much. So in an enterprise class application setup, you might want it to use to host the same server for something else as well until a new server is bought. Now, this is the kind of decision now I take by looking at this graph. So this is how when a capacity manager, infrastructure manager, when they provide some kind of analysis, some kind of a plan, they have to substantiate their sayings using these kind of analysis and models. So this is an underutilized server example. Let's move on. Moving to cloud. What will happen if I move to ESX 5.0 to Hyper-V, which is from Microsoft? Even this is possible by capacity manager. You can ask the question like a capacity manager is actually a third party tool. And how would it know that Hyper-V, Microsoft's Hyper-V's performance? Please understand, guys. It's important to know that every hardware that is released into the market will come with its own benchmark as published by the third party person called TPCC, Transaction Processing Council. So you can go to Google and say TPCC and you can have enough number of uh, information from there. So this is how I do a kind of extrapolation when I move it into the cloud. So if you look at it, the first month there has been a huge jump in terms of utilization and after that uh, there had been some kind of a smoothness. smoothness. So if you look at it, at the end, uh, you, there, is, there is last four months, if you see, there is some, some amount of uh, convexiness there. Okay. So again, like I said, uh, it comes with an experience. And if you look at the first, uh, some second month on the seventh month, there is some amount of, uh, uh, you know, it's like an you know, upward uh, facing circle. And uh, the last three months, there's an inward facing circle that you can see. Right. So this is the kind of uh, derivations I actually take it from these kind of reports. Now, the app is going 3% every year or year. When will it break? Okay, you've got to be very clear. You cannot actually go and purchase an infrastructure once the servers are broken. It's a complete loss of business. So if you want to really tell as to, like, you know, I can see that, uh, uh, you know, a, a new uh, telecom vendor, typically telecom vendor you clearly tells about the volumetrics. They tell that 15% next year. We can see num that many number of callers or subscribers. The next next year is thirty percent. So if it is year on year this much, actually, will the server break? If it is breaking, uh, then when will it break? Now, as you see in the picture, it clearly tells us the model terminates on tenth of August two thousand thirty perfectly. So twenty three eleven two thousand eleven is the starting point, and I wanted to do the extrapolation until twenty fourth twelve two thousand twelve. But it said, I cannot extrapolate further because you have kept the deadline as 90% utilization and that you can easily reach a 10th of July or a 10th of August. So the capacity manager tells that you cannot extrapolate further. So it will stop and it stops there. It just breaks. That's what it causes model terminates at 10th of August 2013. So this is the kind of an understanding. This is the kind of corollary that I can derive from this one graph. So how will the workload grow? Now, if you look at it, uh, there is a combination of all the tiers in one server, which is web server, app server, DB server, and there are other, uh, you know, something like maybe let's assume there's queue or a batch function that keeps running in the server. 
Now, if you wanted to actually even tell whether there will be a growth only on the web server load or app server load, that also you can tell. Now, if you closely look at this graph, when I try to extrapolate from November 2011 to, let's say, to uh, December 2012, there is an actually an uh, utilization increase on the web app server side, which is the blue color graph. But on the cream color one, which is the web server, there is hardly any increase. It's, if you look at it, it more or less it's constant. And DB is not even seen, which means not much of a load. Generally, DB server might not have lots of load because DB servers are all, are all, all tuned for years together. And if you look at it, the kind of threshold I've kept it is a 90% utilization. Now, you can also understand that from here that, uh, oh, yes. Now, you may want it to actually dismantle the app server and put it in some other server. Now, where does the bell ring? The bell rings in the development community saying that now we have to easily take or remove the, or, uh, you know, seamlessly remove the web layer, web tier and app tier because app tier is going to hit at a higher load. So this is the kind of corollary that you need to bring. And this forms a development plan as well for the subsequent quarters and subsequent years. Now, where is the performance index between all this? He is a missing link between the infrastructure team and the business team. The performance guys know what is the business. The performance guys know what is the infrastructure behavior in terms of con configuring different workloads. But do they give it to the business team? They can give only to the business team only when they tell in terms of infrastructure and how it is going to really impact the load. So this is how you will have to find out where does the performance engineer fit in. And these are the ones which are very, very common myth. The first myth is something like planning for capacity can be done in with an Excel spreadsheet, which is what today 80% of the capacity planners do. They use a function called a trend, and they, with the trend, you can actually do a straightforward linear uh, extrapolation. But you cannot consider the fact that there is always the headroom being very less. And it's always not linear, or it is not at all linear. And there's always a curve that comes on. That's the first myth. And the second myth is solving issues at one node on the tire solves quite a few problems. Now, don't look at all those kind of wordings there that I don't have time. You look at this web server, app server, DB server is present. And uh, before tuning, web and DB had problems. And now, now I try to tune web and DB. So now that's running good. And obviously, I see more load coming on app server now. Very simple. If, they, you know, if in a road junction you try to see so much of traffic and try to build a flyover, and that particular road junction you can see the traffic getting resolved. Since that is resolved, all the traffic goes faster and then gets clogged in the next traffic junction. And now, if you look at the second diagram, the app server looks as though that is having a problem. So that is one myth. Okay, so if you solve issue at one node on tiers, it solves quite a few problems. That is a wrong assumption. A good performance uh, in infrastructure should be like there should be a balance of load across all the tiers. And that is one myth that I would like to tell. Hardware is so cheap that I don't need to do a capacity, I don't need a capacity planning at all. Definitely not. This is something that's coming in most of the articles. But I see it as something like hardware is still not cheap and there is amount, some quite some amount of uh, uh, you know, uh, operation expenses and capital expenses, capex and opex being looked into. That is why the clouds are coming. The fourth one, again, it's a continuation of it, which is cloud infrastructure does not need a capacity planning. I can just pay any amount of dollars and I'll keep getting as much as VMs and as much as this one problem. So it still needs a capacity planning because that is when you can balance the load. So we have seen more problems in cloud. This is actually the physical service because physical service is complete in our control. The capacity, the cloud VMs are not in our control and there are so many parameters which has, which has actually integration with this. So that is very important myth that has to be looked at. Then the best of both worlds, worlds performance team and the capacity team, there are a few points that I wanted you to take away as well, which is parallelism. Parallelism enables applications to perform better. The data passing, there's an imbalance in server configuration, improper communication between tiers, all these are going to impact the performance. And all these are going to make our job so interesting and so fun filled and even filled as well. So that's all about uh, the uh, presentation. I just wanted to share 